Hi, this is Henning from Flip Normals, and in this video, we are going to go through how to create the skin texture for this character. This is going to be a really interesting video showing you really a solid breakdown of how you can create textures like this. Now, before we get into the video, I want to talk to you about our latest masterclass called Realistic Character Portrait Masterclass, where we show you how to create this whole character start to finish, including real time showing you how to create the textures which we're covering in this video. We really cover everything from the first sculpting stroke in ZBrush to painting all the maps in Painter, setting up the skin shader in Blender, and then rendering the whole thing in Cycles in Blender. So if you're interested in that, please check out Realistic Character Portrait Masterclass. Skin texturing is a pretty big topic and we're breaking it down basically into just a color map in this video. but. One more thing we do want to talk about before we get into how to create a color map is that if you have a solid model beforehand, if your model is in a good spot with all the mid frequency and high frequency, all the kind of stuff, texturing this model is going to be so much easier. Texturing a model like this that has all the frequencies in here, you can see it has all the little scars, the eyes are refined, it has pores and pimples and everything. Texturing this is so much easier than texturing something that's underdeveloped. This is not a discussion whether you should do the pores in ZBrush or Painter. This is more a discussion of you need to just be sure that your model is in a good spot. Please don't rush into texture painting. You are really going to do yourself a disservice. A model like this can usually be texture painted with some simple gradients, some procedurals on top, and a little bit of hand pen here, and a bit of projections. But if this model was not in an acceptable spot, you would have to open up your black book of tips for texturing. This is where you have to do an insane amount of projections. You have to do all sorts of hacky things in LookDev. Overall, you're really just adding complexity to something that really should be fairly straightforward. So one of the things I really want you to take away from this video is make sure the model is in a really good spot. So in Painter now, we just have really have one fill layer on the bottom called Temp. And this is something I always put on the bottom just to um, have a base color. I usually actually make this quite a saturated color just so we have something crazy so we can really see if something is going through. Uh, and this would also have all different channels as well. So height, roughness and scattering just so that you can make sure that you really have a base. There's nothing, nothing is going to surprise you later on. And then I make a folder called color. And then in this folder, I just make a new filler and I call this base. And this is going to have our main skin tone. The advantage of this workflow is it's pretty procedural. And it means that we can change this base color later on. If you if you're not happy with this base, you don't have to go in and like grade something, create crazy masks, you just go in and you just change this and this is going to update everything. So the exact color we pick right now is not absolutely crazy important. Uh, it is important that it's in the general range, but uh, you can always change this later on. So we're going to pick something like this, which is uh, quite desaturated, but you know, it's a little bit of saturation in it. And then you can just change the hue here as well. So I'm going to pick something about this color. And then we are just going to make sure this is only color. So just all click on the color. We don't want anything else. The way I'm organizing my projects is that I'm making one folder, one group, for each channel. And then these will only contain the channels needed. In terms of pure performance, this is not crazy optimized, but it's very easy to read the project. This is not optimized for computers, it's optimized for humans. So if you open this up later on, it's quite easy to get into. So we just make sure this is in here. We can do that just by clicking the folder icon. And then we are making a new layer, or we can just duplicate this one, Control D, and we're gonna call this red. And this is called red because it's gonna be red. And we're just gonna go through and make a few different colors here. So we're gonna be having red, some maybe some green, some yellows, and just overall bringing down a color variation through fill layers like this. So just make this a kind of a muted red color. And then we are going to right click on it, add the black mask. And in the mask, you just have to make sure to go under and create a paint layer. Because this now means that you can now paint in where you want everything to be. Make sure this symmetry is indeed enabled and also that we go in and we just destroy this one show in our intersection. We don't want that. And then you can really start to paint. Now before that, I'm going to show you my favorite brushes for painting skin. We are going to be starting off with a brush called Dirt 2. 
Dirt 2 is a fantastic general brush for just causing overall mayhem when it comes to painting skin. It's fantastic because it has a lot of specificity, meaning like pen pressure is enabled by default, so you can go in and you can get really specific nice shapes, but it also means that you can just create a lot of variation here. You can also just disable pen pressure up here in uh, the size and enable in the flow, and now you get this really nice and uh, opacity driven brush so this is super cool so i reuse this a lot when creating just general skin this is one of the brushes i use the most and here you can see the workflow basically the only thing you're doing is you are just creating a layer and you're making a paint and then hitting the x key just go between these two between black and white where black is going to erase and white is going to be adding to it so this is really really fast when it comes to just blocking in your paint and then we have the dots brush. Dots is fantastic for adding like general pores and such and just creating a lot of variation here. You can see what this is doing. This one is going to not just like create like a like a measles outbreak or like chicken pox outbreak, it's actually going to be really good for creating a base of, uh, of skin, like all a lot of freckles and such. But what you can do instead of just being additive like this, you can go over this and uh, remove a lot of stuff. And this just means that you get a lot of really, really lovely variation. And then we have Dots Erased, which is similar, but it's it's a little bit more subtle. This is one of the brushes I actually use the most because this blends a little bit nicer. You can see up here that these are very specific with a regular Dots brush. And dots Erased just makes it a little bit more organic. Uh, it has a bit more opacity variation inherently built into it. So we use this actually a lot in the full masterclass as well. So Dots Erased, fantastic. And then we have a brush called the Cracks brush. I'm just gonna kill this layer and gonna make a new one. And here we go. And the cracks is really good for creating overall variation in uh, like, it, it was gonna look like veins. So here you can just see that we just create, get this like really nice veiny pattern from this. You know, you, you don't necessarily want to do this with the red layer. You wanna do this maybe more in your blue, but uh, it's really solid for just creating a lot of nice variation. And then we have the cotton brush. You want a few smooth brushes as well. Uh, so for that we have uh, cotton and we have uh, smooth, smooth noise. And, uh, and this is really good because it allows you to just create nice smooth gradients on the model like this. But you can see it has some texture to it. So you can very easily go in and just add stuff and subtract stuff like this, but with a little bit of texture. I, I don't prefer, at least when you're going for realism, I don't prefer to have something be just crazy smooth, just because it, 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 you just need texture in what you're doing. And then we have the smooth noisy, and this is very similar to this one. And this allows you just to create like really, really soft brushes. This is inspired by uh, a brush I used in um, Mari called Super Smooth, and this is just fantastic if you really just want some crazy, crazy smooth gradients. It has a little bit of noise in it, which is awesome because it just it just makes it look a little bit more organic. But it's just really good for creating these nice, soft gradients. Then we have the mold brush, and the mold brush is awesome for creating an overall base. This is something I've been using a lot when I just want to create like not even just like some grunge textures, just some quick variation because you can just see how fast you can create some nice variation with this brush and again the real magic really goes in going between the x key or going hitting the x key and going between black and white here in the bottom so going in here and then just adding this also the topic of brushes is a vast one there's always going to be some brush we uh, we haven't like you haven't used before so if you have a, a favorite brush please let us know in the comments i would love to hear which brushes you're actually using, because I'm, I'm probably going to integrate some of those into my own personal workflow. And then we have the last one, which is the dust brush. So just adding a new paint layer. And the dust brush is fantastic for just creating a bit of like subtle variation, some little splotches on top of everything like this. So this is really a solid brush for, for just going through and just creating subtle variation, like you can see here. And again, you can go over this with the, um, while well, you've uh, enabled, uh, the black mode or you know just switching the brush to black so you can just erase stuff so um, that dust brush fantastic so these are really all the brushes you need of course there are a lot of really cool ones like there is a whole section here called kyle's brushes where you just have a lot of really cool stuff these are all based on like photoshop brushes so there's a lot of really cool variation in these ones as well 
So that's it for the brush section of this. So let us move on to my overall workflow for this. So I'm going to show you generally how I work. So we just have to make sure that we have a paint layer in here and then that symmetry is enabled. And then I'm going to just make sure we have the mold brush. And then I'm just going to go through and just create some quick variation here. I, I tend to work around the eyes first, basically adding some value variation around the eyes, adding some uh, some value variation around the nose and some around the mouth as well, and some around the ears, because these are the most obvious areas for where you want some red. And then we're just blocking this out, and, and like don't be don't be too shy at this stage. Like just go a little crazy with this. You want some overall coverage uh, because this is going to be the base of a lot of things we are creating later on. Now, obviously, in this video, we we can't create the whole thing, which you can obviously see from the the length of this video. Uh, but we are covering the main steps. Uh, it's really the same thing over and over again. So there's a lot of labor involved where you just have to go in and you just have to just work up all the the different parts. But the main workflow is the same, which is create a fill layer, uh, make a mask for that, and then have a layer inside of this. Also, this is procedural, so this means I can now go in and I can change this to actually be a bit more red, because this is uh, was a bit too uh, a bit too brown before. So I'm just gonna make this a little bit more red, like so. And then after you've done this, make sure you go into the paint layer again. So th this is a really solid workflow, and it's really fast as well once you get used to it. So I'm just going to go in and just create some variation around the lips, just so we can get the main lips in here as well. Cool. And then I'm going to go over with dots erased, and I'm just going to really like add a lot of variation to this. Now, we're not going to take this specific layer too far, just because this is going to take a long time. In the chapter for the mask class, this chapter here was around half an hour long. So that's how long it would take to create just this one layer. Overall, I think the main texturing part for the whole thing for uh, for the skin maps was maybe around three, four hours or so. So you can do it quite fast if you know the overall workflow for it. And of course, if you have some main reference for this as well. But you can see like how quickly you can just create a lot of variation with this. Just with now we just use two brushes at this point. And just go over this and uh, go in with with the white and black. And again, you can also go in and you can change the base color as well. So you can very easily just change this at this point, which is super useful because a traditional workflow has been more project photos and then you grade the photos and all that, which is, of course, a really valid way of working. You get a lot of variation that way, but you end up with a lot of color selections. You have to do a lot of masks and such for this. But if you want to now change everything at the end of the project, meaning you want to change the whole color scheme of your of your character, you don't have to do that by grading something necessarily. You can, of course, but you can just go in and change the color of the fill layer. And this is a really powerful way of, of working. You can also see as well, like uh, the dots erase brush is awesome because it means you can get big strokes like this, a big color changes, but you can also go in like this and you can really add a lot of subtle variation as well, more specific variation. So you can go in and, and just make sure these are a lot smaller like so. And then you can go in with uh, a little bit of like dust as well. And uh, just go in here. Here's something to just added in Painter as well recently. You see here, we have favorites now. So you can just right click and just add to favorites and then you're gonna pop up here right on top, <laughs> which is super useful. So just adding a little bit of dust as well to this, uh, which will really just make sure this pops. And this is what the finished red map looks like. You can see it looks quite different from what we had before. But basically, the only difference is that we've, uh, we've balanced the base color and we have a, a different color for the red and we just have uh, a more variation and more refinement in the actual mask itself. You can see if we hit the Alt key, this is this is what we have for the actual mask. Like it's just really nothing too fancy going on here. It's just a black and white mask that we just painted from scratch. And then we are starting to add more layers to this. This is where we are not going to show any more actual painting because this would just take ages. But what we're doing, we're just building this up step by step. So now we have a layer called redder where we're just adding a bit more variation into this. And then we're going in and we're adding yellow to this. Then we're adding a little bit of blue to this. And you can see the approach is exactly the same as before. Now you can just see that the blue is just dots erased going and going in here and just adding blue in certain areas. And then we have one called darker. And this is where we're just going in and just making this a little bit darker. 
it's important to to add some value variation as well because it color variation by itself is is of course useful but a lot of things are just brighter or darker so this is really what it looks like when I'm done hand painting, meaning at this point I've controlled absolutely everything myself by hand. So we've just built this up layer by layer and uh, no procedurals, no photo bashing on top, just straight up paint everything by hand. You can also see he has horns as well. We're not covering this in this video at all, but uh, here you're going to see we're just making it a little bit darker around the base as well. The reason I like this approach is because it's, it's simple. 3D is really hard as it is, you know, we, we're dealing with a bunch of different software on a daily basis, a bunch of different hotkeys, the software we're using, is, they're hard to use. And just keeping it as simple as possible is really going to make your life a lot easier. It means that you can, for instance, go into this scene like two years after you made it and you can understand what's going on. You understand that, well, red is probably going to be the red one, the blue is going to be the blue one. And you can keep changing this, you can keep grading this up. And it just means that your workflow is nice and, and simple to use. It also is highly scalable because you can use this on any kind of character. If you're doing a, a guy like this, who's some kind of like more, a bit more of a humanoid monster character, or if you're doing something straight up out of like Diablo, or if you're doing like a, a realistic baby human or anything like, you know, this, this technique works for everything because basically it's just breaking down the texture into a few different colors where we need a base color. What is the overall color? Uh, basically what kind of what's the melanin level and what is the skin damage done to it and what is the overall variation of the uh, of the skin and then we're just breaking down into some areas are red some are redder some are yellow some are blue some might be a little bit green as well in terms of um, working based on the old uh, color zones of the face i am concerned about that but not like 100 percent. meaning that you can see here uh, the mouth area is a little bit more blue the the area areas around the bones are a little bit more blue a little bit more yellow the areas where there is a lot of uh, blood there but a bit more red but it's not like i'm religiously going towards those if you were to actually observe a human face you're not going to just see crazy areas of blue green yellow orange all that kind of stuff it's going to be more subdued than that it's going to be more subtle so that's my overall approach look at at general human faces and seeing what's there instead of just using some arcane color chart made ages ago though it is it does serve some purpose and at this point we're done with our main hand painting which means that uh, we've controlled everything up until this point but the problem is you can't really take it all the way up just by hand painting unless you're spending an insane amount of time the pro of hand painting everything is you do control absolutely everything if you want this little scar to be perfectly red and the lips to be exactly where they are. We do control that beautifully. The problem is we need a lot of variation to make the skin read. So for that, we are using procedurals. And the approach for that is, ex is exactly the same as before. We are making a filler and we are making that a specific color. Make sure it's only active in the color channel. And then we're going in and the only difference now is that we are adding a, uh, a fill layer into this instead of adding a paint layer. So this means that it's going to look like this, where we are just going in and we're just adding a procedural on top. And you can just see it just adds a bit more variation in this if you just go before and after. Now in this case, the color does change a little bit as well. And that's deliberate. I kind of use this as color grading as well, where now it just gets a little bit warmer. The procedural I'm using here is called BNW Spots 3, which is just black and white spots 3, which is really useful. And you can just go in, you can just set this to a triplanar as well. Uh, you can also use some of the other ones as well, like just UV projection. The problem with that, you can have a UV seams. By using just a triplanar, then you're going to have um, like planes shooting from different sides, and this is going to blend it all together. So this is completely independent of your UV layout. And this just allows you to really easily just create some nice variation. You can see this the BMW Spot 3 is fantastic for this because it really just adds a lot of variation. But at the end of the day, it's just a mask. You could absolutely hand paint this from scratch. But the advantage is just the fact that you can change this so easily. So if there's something you don't enjoy, you can just change this around like this. If you were to hand paint this, obviously you couldn't do that. And then we're just adding a few of these. But if you if you, there are areas you don't enjoy, you can definitely like paint them out. Like if you you really realize that one part around the eyes, for instance, it just is not working. You can go in and you can just. Uh, go in with like maybe like the cotton brush or like the smooth brush and then just, just straight out just paint it out like so and this is the advantage of having like soft brushes like the cotton and the smooth uh, noise because here you can really just go in and you can just, just blend this out 
So this is a really good way of doing this. Now you can go in here, you can see that around the eyes, there's nothing currently here. And then of course you can go in and you can change the opacity as well for this on and off. So really good approach for doing this. You're kind of combining the best of both worlds. You have the procedural nature of the uh, actual uh, procedural, you know, everything is nice and organic, but then we can hand paint out or in details where you want it to be. And then we're just using another uh, procedural top. This is just a 3D early noise, which just adds a bit of variation to the whole thing. And then we're doing the same thing with this as well. And here we're using like, some grunges on top as well. The grunge maps are really, really useful because they will just add a lot of variation and not just in a dirty way, like it's actually going to feel like it's, it's covered in dirt. It can just make it nice and organic. What's important with these as well is that uh, they have a little bit of color in them. You don't want these just to be like a grayscale, like just black and white like so, because that's going to just make it feel dirty. You want to actually make it like make it have some hue and some saturation in it. Then we have a third projection, which is just a grunge projection. And this one is also just a triplanar, you can see here. And this is just using just a grunge concrete one. For this, it's not like I'm specifically using grunge con concrete. Like it's not like that's my favorite. I just generally just go through here and just type grunge. And I just try out a few different ones. And then you can change their brightness and contrast. And these are really going to, to help you. There are so many good grunges. And if you find some really good grunges as well that works well for textures, just let us know in the comments. Would love to see that as well. But just grunge concrete works really well for this. And it just looks like this. It's subtle. But it just means that you get a bit more variation in your color map like so. Again, this is just a mask. That's the only thing it's doing. It's nothing fancy, but it means that it's entirely procedural. So you can change this up quite a lot. So if you, you don't, you're not enjoying this, you can just move this around like so. And also don't be overly concerned with what something looks like necessarily in the in the view here just with the pure mask. Because if you're, if you're overly concerned with this, you might uh, be losing out a lot of awesome things happening in the actual uh, material view. Because a lot of the mistakes you're seeing in the mask view, you, you can't really see them here. So just make sure that you're you're properly using this 3D view as a way to uh, to gauge what's happening in your textures and not just the uh, the view here. That said, it's still good to sand to check it because it can be really helpful to to see if there are any issues with like seams or some crazy stuff going on. Like you might just be aware that well this side here has definitely a seam to it. So in that case maybe you want to go in and just paint this in or out. Just create create this uh create the, uh, a bit more of an organic split here, you know, some of this as well. You can just go in and just make this a bit more organic. But you know, entirely up to you. And like I said, most likely you aren't really going to be seeing this in the um, in the the full material view anyway. And also one of the reasons for this is that we've been setting this to soft light for blending modes. I highly recommend using something like soft light. You can see here if you just set this to normal, this looks crazy. You cannot work with this at all. And now you're starting to see the issues. But the moment you're starting to play around with uh, some blending modes like overlay, then you can see that stuff blends a little bit more. You can also just go in and set this to soft light, which is just down here. And this just blends it a little bit nicer, makes it a bit more saturated. And then you just change the opacity for this. So whenever you're adding a procedural, be sure to change the blending mode and make sure to change the opacity as well. And at this point, we have a pretty solid base for our, our colors, but it's still missing some overall variation, which is what we're going to jump to next. Now this is the point where I'm going more between painter and seabrush in a very direct way. I'm jumping back into seabrush, I'm adding some more veins to it, uh, like there's going to be veins in the model. I'm going in and refining the forehead a little bit more and just overall adding more refinement to the model. Now I don't actually export the model back to painter because you know it just adds a bit of complexity to it. But what I am doing is I'm exporting out maps from ZBrush to Painter. So in this case, we have a displacement map. And this is subtle. You want to be sure that this doesn't go too crazy. In in this case, I have actually made all the pores and such in ZBrush. That's a discussion for another day, whether you should do that in Painter or in ZBrush. But at least in this case, we did do this in ZBrush. And again, like before, this is just a very simple setup where we have a uh, just a fill layer with some color to it, just a, a dark saturated color, like, you know, pretty dark color. And then we are just going in and just adding a fill layer like this. This is just where the displacement map actually goes. And let's just change this to normal and just change the opacity to this. And you're not going to see anything at this point. And the reason for this is that the scale of the displacement map is a little crazy. So you really can't see anything. So then we have to go in with the levels. And I'm just straight up just like 
punching this in. You're just really crunching this. And then we're adding another one. Basically, I'm just duplicating this one. And now you can really see a lot. If we go in here, you can really see a lot of stuff. And then we're going in and we're just flat, just flat out inverting this. You can just invert this with the invert button or just moving the input or the black and white points here. So now we just like this. And then I'm painting on a lot of things. Because at this point, we we have too much information in it. And I really don't want a lot of this stuff down here. It's just a bit too crazy. And a lot of the um, wrinkles and such, we really don't want them in there. So I'm just painting this out and then I'm balancing this out a little bit as well. So what you're seeing now is that all the pores and everything, they are getting a bit more of a definition to them. They're getting a bit of a darker and more saturated look. Not too saturated, just a little bit. And then we're just setting this whole thing to soft light. And then we're just decreasing the intensity or the opacity rather which will look like this. So now you can see it's subtle, but it still adds a bit more of variation to it. Like it just grounds the whole thing. And then as well, at this point, I've also painted more of the veins, like I mentioned before. And I'm just straight up just painting this in, in uh, Painter now. It just adds a bit more of variation to this. And I found this level to be where everything is really coming together. You know, it's still, before we added this, it's still quite clean and we really just want to break this up. So one thing that helps a ton is to add pimples as well. This is something that's easily all overlooked. But if you jump to Seabrush, you can really see a lot of these tiny pimples. Like if you look at his forehead particularly and his chin as well, you can really see a lot of these pimples. And they just really look nice in the sense that, you know, they're super simple to make. You just go over with the standard brush and like just a few... Uh, like a tiny, tiny row size for this. You just go over and just add them. And they just break everything up. Because the same thing is happening here with the uh, the overall pores. Everything is looking nice and broken up. But we need something to just take our attention. So now our eye is just going to go from this pimple to this pimple. And it's just going to add another frequency to it. So what I'm doing at this point actually is that I'm straight up just creating a mask and seabrush. I'm going in, I'm just filling this in with white. You should probably do this not on 65 million polygons. But you're just going in and just filling in the whole thing with white by going to color and then fill object. And then we just set this to black. And now with the standard brush, we just enable RGBA or RGB and then set the RGB intensity to 100. And then you can just go in and you can just paint in where you want these to be. The advantage of this is that you really control where these pimples are. You could of course extract these from some kind of displacement map, but honestly, that's not gonna produce fantastic results and it can look a little bit dirty in the end as well. And now we're just controlling it perfectly. So once you're done with this, you know, spend like 10 minutes or so on this, this does not take a whole lot of time. Once you're done with this, you straight away just export this out from ZBrush using this multi-map exporter. And the only thing you change now here is you set this to polypaint and then you just export this out. Now jumping back to Painter, what we're doing is we are adding another fill layer, same thing as before, make sure this is only available in the color and we have a pretty dark and slightly saturated color. Then in the mask, we're adding a fill layer. And this is where we are straight up adding our polypainted ma maps from uh, ZBrush. You can see it has the number four in front and that indicates how many UDIMs we have because we are working with four UDIMs for this character. And then we have to invert it as well. I just removed the inversion because what we did in ZBrush uh, is that we painted with black on top of white. And this is simply so we can see what's going on. If you were to fill it in with black and then you're painting these guys with white, you actually can't see anything. So we just have to do it that way. So paint uh, with black on top and then we simply just invert it. I'm using just a quick levels for this. We can just hit invert and there you go. And then we are just simply setting this to uh, soft light and then reducing the opacity of this. And you can always go and you can change this. You know, if you want this to be like crazy pink or something, you can always do this. This is such a huge advantage of this workflow that you can very easily go in and you just play around with this. And um, that's really it for developing the color map. It's really important that you have an attention detail when it comes to adding little veins and little pores and tiny little pimples and such. This is going to add a lot of variation to it. And also just like seeing tiny little scars here, adding a bit of variation in terms of the color. So that's really it on how I've created this whole skin texture from scratch. This is all done without any photo projections or anything. This is done using hand painting and procedurals on top and then adding a bit of seabrush magic to this. Just to reiterate, the whole workflow is based around making fill layers with masks and then just having simply different colors in the fill layers and then having different data in the mask as well, which you can do with just a few simple brushes. You can really paint the whole thing with just like the dirt to brush and like dots erased. So the workflow itself is really quite simple. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this uh, Substance Painter skin 
painting tutorial. If you like this video, please leave a comment. I would love to hear your skin painting tips as well, like specifically what brushes do you use, what procedurals you do enjoy. And if you have just any general painting tips for a painter, we'd love to hear that. And then make sure to subscribe and hit the little notification bell as well to get notified every single time we put out a new video. And again, check out the new masterclass with 21 hours of real-time videos showing you how to create this whole character from scratch from the first stroke in ZBrush to the last shader tweak in Blender.